Have your way, Lord. Part 1. Nora lives in a nursing home, most likely because of health issues. She seems to be young compared to most or all of the other residents and shouldn't really be in a nursing home at her age. But she decided not to allow her situation to dampen her spirit. Probably she was a Bible study leader or Sunday school teacher when she wasn't in a nursing home. She decided to use her gifts to be a blessing. She started having weekly Bible studies with other residents. At some point, Mark started attending the Bible studies. One day, Mark told Nora that he had a question for her. He had been hearing about Jesus for a long time, but didn't have any relationship with him. He wanted to know what he needed to do to become a follower of Jesus. Did he have to go to church? Did he have to see a pastor? Nora told Mark that he could give his life to Christ anywhere, not necessarily in church. He also didn't need a pastor to lead him to, to Christ. She could do that. Nora explained to Mark how to get born again and led him to Christ. About 30 minutes later, Mark died from a massive heart attack. A shocked, surprised, excited Nora said something like this to Isabella, another Christian sister. 30 minutes would have been too late. Wherever we are in life, we have two choices. Allow our situation, good or bad, to draw us away from what God would have us to do or submit to the Holy Spirit and allow him to take charge and help us to be who God wants us to be in spite of our situation. There are people who live for and serve God when things are tough for them. If God shows them mercy and things become beautiful for them, they change completely. They become arrogant and full of themselves. Some become nonchalant towards the work of God. They lose the respect they had for their church leaders, spouses, and so on. In the case of some who suffered a lot before God showed them mercy and delivered them, they still remained humble before God and man. They keep living for and serving God. They even choose to do better than they did before God stepped in to bless them. There are others who used to live a very beautiful life. They seemed to have everything they needed in life. It looked like God cared for no one but them. Then suddenly something happened and they lost everything but their lives, just like it happened in the case of Job. Life was no longer as beautiful as it used to be for them. Many Christians who found themselves in this kind of situation lost their love for righteous living and their zeal for God's service. Thankfully, there are other Christians who have remained faithfully committed to God and all he stands for, even after he allowed things to turn around for the worse in their lives or homes. Nora decided to be a blessing to mankind and the source of glory and praise to God in spite of being in a nursing home at an age when she would have preferred to be out in the world living a regular life. She was determined to love God and use the gifts he had given her to serve him in spite of the situation she found herself in. How have you been responding to the different situations of your life? Are you like Nora, who decided not to allow anything to discourage her from being the best she could be for God? Or are you one of those who love, appreciate, serve and live for God only when he is nice to them and then abandon him when they think he has changed, even though we know he remains the same forever, according to Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. Job chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. On another day, the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them to present himself before him. And the Lord said to Satan, Where have you been? Where have, where have you come from? Satan asked, answered the Lord, From roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on earth. There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. And he still maintains his integrity, though you incited me against him to ruin him without any reason. Skin for skin, Satan replied, a man will give all he has for his own life. But now stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones, and he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well then, he is in your hands, but you must spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. Then Job took a piece of broken pottery and scraped himself with it as he sat among the ashes. His wife said to him, 
Are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. He replied, You are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. That's the New International Version. What Job's wife advised him to do is what a lot of Christians today do when things don't go the way they want. Many literally curse God, calling him an unjust, unfaithful God who is not worth their attention. Job was determined that even if God chose to kill him, he would still trust him. The Spirit of God on one side and Satan, demons, the world and the flesh on the other want to teach us how to respond to the problems of life. But we must not allow the enemies of God to succeed in leading us because they can never lead us in the path that will give God pleasure. No matter how tough it is, let us decide that God must be honored in and through our lives. May the Lord help us all in Jesus' name. Amen.